Hey guys, so we are on 8.3 inverse of cube and cube root functions. You're going to add this page to your notebook on page 167, and then you're going to use page 168 to do your classwork for. Okay, so here we go. So just to review what um, inverse functions are, we're going to go over some key concepts. So an inverse relation Remember we talked about that's where your domain and your range switch places. So what was the domain becomes the range. What was the range becomes the domain. Okay. That's an inverse relation. Inverse relation means that your X values can repeat and that is okay. All right. Now to talk about inverse function, inverse of something, the inverse um, function is denoted by F to the negative one. And we read it as the inverse of F or as F inverse. The notation of f x used for the functions, but the relationship f to negative one may not even be a function. Okay, so unless it's a function, we will put f of f of x to the negative one. Otherwise, for relation, we just put f to the negative one. Okay, so to determine whether it's a function or not, we have to use composition of functions. And if you remember, that's when we're putting a function inside of a function. That is composition of functions. And when we and when we substitute one function into the other, if the resulting simplified value is x for both substitution, so for both composition is x, then therefore the two functions that you're working with are inverses of each other. The other thing to remember is right off the bat, you will know if a function has an inverse function. And to determine that, you want to know if it's one to one. So we've talked about it before, one to one functions. Um, they're going to pass the vertical line test. That means if I had a vertical line, I go across, I'm only going to hit one, one point at a time, but they also pass the horizontal line test. Okay. That means I'm going to hit one point at a time going horizontally. Okay. Um, but as far as domain, you're looking to see that in the original function that no, no domain values repeat and no range values repeat. That means for every, Every x value, there's only one y value. For every y value, there's only one x value, okay? So it's a, a healthy relationship. A one-to-one -one function is a healthy relationship. Think about it in that way, okay? But if the original function, your f, is not one-to-one, -one, then its inverse will not be a function. It would just be an inverse. So looking here, we have cube and cube root. So our cube function is the red. And if you look here, our cube root function passes the vertical line test. If I go up and down with one, and it'll pass, it passes. If I go up and down, doom, 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 on the red line, I'm only hitting one line, one point at a time on the line. If I go horizontally, zoom, 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 zoom. I'm also only hitting one line, one point on the line at a time, okay? So I know that this is a one-to-one -one function, which means that its inverse is also a function. Hence why the cube root is a function, okay? So the cube root is a function, and it's the inverse of the cube function. Okay. Visually, we can tell that something is inverses of each other is if they are symmetrical across the y equals x line. So this imaginary line that goes through the origin, y equals x, is our line of reflection when we are trying to verify whether two functions that are graphed are inverses of each other. So y equals x um, is key. So this is our line of reflection right here. line of symmetry, not reflection, I'm sorry. Squeeze it in there. Oh, pretend that you see the R. Line of symmetry, okay? So how do we find the inverse of a cube and cube root function, right? So the steps are pretty much the same as we did when we had linear and quadratic. The steps are you're going to switch your x and y variables around, and if need be, you need to make sure you rewrite f of x as y. Then you're going to use inverse operations to solve for y. Remember, inverse operations is reminding yourself the opposite of adding is subtract, the opposite of multiplying is dividing, the opposite of squaring is square root, and such and such. Okay. Then you're going to write the final um, final result using y to the negative one or f of x equals negative one. Okay. And that's just to symbolize that it's a function and it's the inverse function. All right. So we're going to follow these three steps. 
So here we have, it says find the inverse of f of x equals 2 times x plus 3 cubed plus 1, okay? So step 1 says I'm going to switch my x and my y. Remember, I'm going to rewrite f of x as y because that's what it is. Remember, f of x is just y all fancy. So we have x equals 2 times y plus 3 cubed plus 1, okay? Step 2 says we're going to use inverse operations to get y by itself okay we've talked about this analogy before think about when you're trying to rob a bank when you rob a bank do you get to go straight to the vault no you do not there are things you have to get through in order to get to the vault so in this case we can't go straight to y we have to work our way to y so we first we have to get rid of our addition so we have plus one so in order to get rid of plus one we're going to subtract one from both sides that leaves us with x minus one equals two times y plus 3 cubed, okay? We still can't get to, to the volt yet, so we're still trying to get to y. So outside of y, we have multiplication. The opposite of multiplication is division, so we're going to divide by 2. What I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. So now that leaves us with x minus 1 divided by 2 equals y plus 3 to the third, okay? Still can't get to y. Have the cube to get rid of. The opposite of cubing something is the cube root. What I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. That's going to leave me with the arrow down. So we're left with the cube root of x minus 1 divided by 2 equals y plus 3. Okay, and our final goal is to get y by itself. So we're going to get y by itself, I'm going to have to subtract 3, okay? Subtracting 3 is the same thing as adding negative 3. So I just did that because that's where it was written out. And now y is by itself, so step 3 says to write your answer using inverse notation. So it started off as f, so we're going to have inverse function equals, and I know it's a function because cube functions are one-to-one, -one. therefore cube root functions are also functions. So we're left with the cube root of x minus 1 divided by 2 minus 3. Okay, could you separate your x over 2 and all this? Yes, so you could totally write it as the cube root of x over 2 minus 1 half minus 3. Totally possible, totally doable. You can also write it as, I forgot my little 3. The cube root of 1 half times x minus 1, not 2, didn't mean to write the 2, x minus 1 minus 3. All of these are acceptable answers as far as how you can represent the inverse of this function, and that's what step 3 was asking. All right, so these are all acceptable ways of writing the inverse. Right. The benefit of the last way is that when we start talking about, well, we've already talked about transformations, but here you can clearly see what your B value is and what your C value is. And you can say, okay, this is a horizontal, a horizontal stretch by one half. And this is a horizontal shift to the right. And this is a vertical shift down. So like you can see the transformations, which is beneficial when you're writing it in this form. Okay. All right. So again, all three of these answers are acceptable. So the goal is to be able to understand and read all three very easily. All right, we're gonna try another one. Okay, so for this one, I would like for you to pause for a second and then try. All right, welcome back. Let's see how you did. So step one, you're supposed to switch your x and your y. Remember, f of x is the same thing as a fancy y. So we have x equals the cube root of y minus 2 plus 4. Don't know why I made that so long. Um, and our goal is to get y by itself. So step 2 says I'm going to use inverse operations to get y by itself. So I have this plus 4, which means I'm going to subtract 4. What I do to one side, I do to the other. And that leaves me with x minus 4 equals the cube root of y minus 2. Okay, the opposite of a cube root is to cube. So I'm going to cube. Notice that because there are two terms on this side, 
I can't just cube them individually. I have to cube them together. It is x minus 4 to the third power. Okay, this cancels out my cube. I'm left with x minus 4 to the third equals y minus 2. Okay, so I still need to get y by itself. I have a minus 2, so I'm going to add 2. That cancels out the negative 2. What I do to one side, I do to the other. And now y is by itself. So my inverse function equals x minus 4 to the third plus 2. And that is finding the inverse of a cube root function. And the previous one was finding the inverse of a cube function. All right. So um, on your classwork, please make sure you work through these completely. Show your work on page 164. If need be, if you have questions, please let me know. All right. So proving a cubic and cube root function are inverses. So in order to prove that a cubic and cube root function are inverses, what we need to remember is that if two functions are inverses of each other, they will undo each other. Okay. You can prove that functions are inverses using compositions of functions, which is where we talked about you're putting a function in a function. Okay. So we're going to substitute g of x into f and f of x into g. All right. We're going to look at an example of a problem that's completely worked out and talk about how the steps took, look, took place. So here we have use composition of functions to determine whether f of x equals cube root of x plus 2 and g of x equals x cubed minus 2 are inverses of each other. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is do f composed of g of x. Okay. So that means I'm taking g of x and I'm substituting in wherever x is in the cube root of x plus 2. Okay, that's what this says I did. So all we did here was we took f and instead of sub g of x, we put in x cubed minus 2. So at where x used to be, we substituted in x cubed minus 2. And then we're going to simplify. Okay, so we substitute it, substitute it, and now we're going to simplify. Okay. So we have negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so they cancel out. We're left with x cubed. Remember, the cube root is asking when it's an exponent, what is 3 divided by 3? Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and there's no remainder. So you're left with x to the 1. And we're going to do repeat this. Now we're doing g composed of f of x, which means that we took g and we substituted in the cube root of x plus 2. So everywhere that x was, it became cube root of x plus 2, which is why this says cube root of x plus 2 cubed, because that's where x used to be. Well, when you cube a cube root, they're going to cancel each other out. Okay, so we cubed a cube root. And when we cube the cube root, I don't know why this is written here, we were left with x plus 2 minus 2. Okay, so we are left with x plus 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 0, and we're just left with x. Because both of these compositions come down to equal x, that means that these two functions are inverses of each other. Okay, and that's how you verify. So you check f composed of g of x, g composed of f of x, and if they both equal x, then they are inverses. So let's try it ourselves. So here we have f of x equals the cube root of x plus 13 and g of x equals x minus 13 to the third. Okay, so we're going to do f of x composed of g of x, which means we're substituting g of x into f of x. So f and g of x equals x minus 13 to the third power. So we're going to substitute that in. That gives us the cube root of x minus 13 to the third power plus 13. When you take the root, the cube root of a cube, it's going to set whatever free. They are inverses, so they cancel each other out. And we're left with x minus 13 plus 13. We have negative 13 and positive 13, so they're going to 
cancel each other out because it's a zero and we're left with x. So we fully simplify it. We substitute it, then we simplify it. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we have g of x composed of f of x, which means we're going to substitute in f of x into g. So we have g substituting in the cube root of x plus 13. So everywhere that there's an x, we're putting in 13. And then we're putting the cube root of x plus 13. So that's going to be parentheses, the cube root of x plus 13 minus 13 cubed. What happens to our 13 minus 13? It becomes 0. And we're left with the cube root of x to the third. When you cube a cube root, they're going to cancel each other out, and we're left with x. So notice how both compositions comes down to equaling x, boom, boom. That means that f of x and g of x are inverses. And that's how you verify inverses, okay? So... Your classwork is on Canvas. It is due by Friday. So please take your time, work through it, try all the problems, show all of your work. And again, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you and have a great day.